What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I have a very special guest with me. This is Kasun. He has been a huge part of building Analyst Builder and kind of from the very, very beginning. And so we're gonna have a three-part series. In this video, we're gonna be talking a lot about how we actually started Analyst Builder, how we came up with the idea, how we built it, and some of, um, some of the challenges that we overcame while we were building it. We'll do another video where we're gonna be talking about the challenges of a startup because, you know, He's part of a startup, I'm part of a startup, we're building the startup together. Um, so there's a lot of challenges that we've overcome over the past year and a half that we've been doing this. Uh, and then the last one, we're gonna be doing the infrastructure of Analyst Builder because it is very complex. Uh, it's not super straightforward, uh, like most other websites are quite simple. Uh, this platform is extremely complicated and there were a lot of things that we had to change and fix over time. So that's gonna be a completely separate video. But in this one, we're gonna be focusing on how we started Analyst Builder. And so uh, really quick, you just wanna introduce yourself uh, to this camera and then we'll start going after that. Hi all, uh, I'm Kasun uh, and I'm also running a startup called Wavesync. Uh, I'm actually working uh, as the CTO of this company uh, when we got contact with Alex and uh, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Well, let's start out by just kind of talking about how we got in contact with each other. So like. How did, how did we start talking about this idea? And actually I'll start because uh, this idea formed back in 2021. Uh, I had this idea where I was like, I really want to create courses. I've always wanted to do that. I didn't have time at that time, but I always wanted to create courses and I didn't want them to just be like a Udemy course. I wanted them to be more interactive and have more like be able to code in it, which you can't really do on a lot of platforms. And so I, you know, started talk, asking people, uh, talking with people, trying to uh, find, you know, somebody who would know how to do this. And so I also posted online uh, and, and reached out to a bunch of people. And then that's when you kind of messaged me and were like, you know, was like, hey, I think I can do this. So what, what is your recollection of that? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really funny. Um, I was actually in an ATM queue. <laughs> There's like a lot of people ahead of me and I didn't have anything to do. So I was just checking, uh, you know, jobs posted in the platform. And there's someone who has boasted about creating a remote code execution engine. And that was so weird for me, like seeing something like that in like a platform like this. Mm -hmm. So I, I got, I kind of had an idea like how to do something like this. So I immediately messaged him. Uh, and that's how I got came into contact with Alex. I didn't know him before, but uh, after some time we got to know each other. Uh, so, yeah, I think without that ATM queue, we wouldn't be even meet today. Yeah. Well, also, you know, we started messaging and, uh, you know, there's a very specific project. There's a very, very specific idea and and infrastructure behind it. And so I had an idea of how I wanted it done and I needed someone who kind of already knew what it was. And so I, there were other people who messaged me saying they wanted to help with it, but they didn't really understand it. But then when you started, you know, we started talking, I really felt like you understand what I wanted and already had a good idea of like how to do it. And so I think that that was a big factor. And, you know, I was like, I like, this is the guy that I want to work with. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, actually this, Platform is, as you mentioned, that is quite specific and it's quite complicated. You need to have like, you know, areas. Uh, you need to know a lot of things to like do this. Like you need to know internals of the operating systems and a lot of other factors to like build a platform like this. So I think that's uh, when we initially talking about the platform, I think we mentioned about how we can execute code securely because mm -hmm. that is the main main thing we wanted so we started there actually yeah and when then uh, then we came back to other stuffs mm -hmm. so we started tracking down the problem in the core like uh, which is the remote code execution engine and from that we built everything around it right so that is the most complicated part there yeah so we were you know the tough part is we're starting from scratch we have nothing no base to build off of so we had to code everything from scratch, which is, you know, really tough. Um, but really what we were trying to do for the first 
until we did the beta launch was create an MVP, just like something that's the core of what we're trying to build and then we can build off of that. And so building that MVP was a long process. Um, and so <laughs> even over here, I just, I was, you know, when we, when we got about six months in, we started doing like a redesign. Yeah. Um, because those first six months, you guys were kind of going a little bit off of like what I wanted, which I'm not a designer <laughs> and I'm not like, that's like not my thing. Um, and they did exactly how I wanted it, but that turned out to not be perfect because that's not, I'm not good at designing things. So then, you know, you guys kind of took over, right? Yeah, we took over from that and we actually we designed everything we had. Yeah. So it took some time, mm -hmm. but I can see that it paid well off. Yes. Uh, the time we spent on that, because uh, compared to what we had initially, we now have something really, really cool. It's even, much better. <laughs> really, really good. And it took some time for us to like, you know, we had to like design everything from scratch at that point. And we saw that this is okay, but this is not what we're going to do because this platform is really cool underneath and we need to make it look like really also cool. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of think of like, like uh, how we can change the design in such a way so people can you know see how cool it how right. cool is this and so if you like show this website to someone else who doesn't understand data science even i think you know they will say this interface is really good right so that's the time we took to like you know redesign everything yeah and well and you know you guys did a big redesign with the actual look and feel of it but we also did quite a bit of a redesign on the architecture as well yeah because we didn't we needed to account for more users, yeah. which is, I'm really glad we did that, but you know, we didn't have a full idea of how many users we would have at first, but why, like how did that happen and why did we choose to change our architecture halfway through the project? Yeah, actually this, uh, you know, that thing is that with, with most projects, you start with like a very small user base, but you know, with Alex background, it was quite challenging because we already have kind of like people who knows Alex. So we had to think ahead, like, you know, there can be like a lot of users who will be coming. Like, do you remember like when we did the launch, mm -hmm. even before you announce, people started to register. Right. Right away when we just uh, switch back page. to the, oh yeah. Right. Switch back from the landing page to the actual website. So we were also surprised that people were always looking for this. Yeah. So this was uh, something we had to tackle early on, like uh, how we can handle this unpredictable uh, load of the users. Mm -hmm. So for that, uh, we came up with, uh, we used Kubernetes for that. Uh, so we'll explain this in a later video. Right, right in the architecture so video. That, <laughs> yeah, that covers uh, almost everything we needed, like handling this dynamic user load. And with this Kubernetes architecture, we also use some special tools, which can actually do this dynamic scaling, which I'm going to talk uh, in depth in next videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, I think that part took probably the longest out of everything was actually getting the remote code execution engine to work really well consistently and then be able to scale with users because we could have one day have 100 users or the next day have 1,000 or the next day 5,000 and it has to work every time. Okay. So you can't, you can't have it failing consistently that'd be bad for users right um but also a big part of you know like i talked about earlier a big part of why i didn't just create a course and put it on udemy is i wanted the integration of the remote code execution engine in the courses and so we also didn't just build the questions page we also build a full questions page and with that then you guys built an admin panel as well which is again challenging and so you know I guess what were the, what were some of those like challenges of just like balancing all those different things? Yeah, so actually that uh, you know that this admin panel part that was also quite challenging because we had to do a lot of stops. You know, this is not like a regular website, right? So you had to do you know that when you see questions, it has a lot of work under the uh, under the hood. So we had to like create the admin panel, like uh, facilitate these needs. Uh, to like 
add data sets, define data types, a lot of stuff. So we had to spend some time designing these things, architecturing these things, and you know, the way we wanted to like incorporate data with the remote code execution. So this played a bigger part uh, in this project. So we had to take some time to like design these things, like um, get these ideas into working. So some, some of them took uh, some time uh, actually, uh, but uh, basically uh, uh, it was like, uh, you know, that something integrated. You have like a lot of stuffs working together. So the most uh, challenging part was like uh, creating this architecture which actually works uh, with all these different components. So I think that's was the most challenging part when yeah. you're doing that. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. It like now that we've built it out and now it's working and it's like just really good, you know, even just me looking at it now, I'm like, this is, this is awesome. It's, it's, it's just amazing how it all works together, how it all is working in like unison. You know, there's nothing that really fights each other. It all works collectively. And I think that's kind of tough because oftentimes when you're building something like this, you have conflicting um, priorities or conflicting architecture, which, you know, as one does something, the other one shouldn't be doing something. It's really tough to, to do that. Um, but then we finally got to our beta launch, right? That took about a year from starting the project to actually getting to our beta launch, um, which was in late in, I think it was October of 2023, right? Yeah. So it took about one year to get there. And then we had the beta launch. Um, how, how did you feel about the beta launch and how it went and, you know, opening up our year's project to like people and having them actually like use it? Yeah, actually that uh, I think we had this landing page which people could register like uh, to like a newsletter when we like uh, opening up the uh, website. And I saw like there were like, oh, like 7,000 people, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like a large user base even for a uh, beta launch. Yeah. And yeah, actually, um, actually we were a bit scared because <laughs> We didn't do something like this before, like yeah. opening a website in like 7,000 people yeah. at once. Mm -hmm. So it was like, as I remember when we opened it, there was like 2,000 signups, something like that mm -hmm. after like one or two hours. Mm -hmm. So it was like a huge thing yeah. at that time. So actually, uh, that's something uh, I think we can really be proud of. Like, uh, and there are like few issues few bugs, mm -hmm. but they were not the ones we were expecting. <laughs> yeah. It was totally, yeah. un uh, totally unexpected things. Yeah. And, uh, but after some time, we actually could solve almost every uh, problem we had. Yeah. Now we have like a very kind of stable platform mm -hmm. after like two months, I guess, after mm -hmm. the beta launch, we went with the full launch. So I guess, um, yeah, we had to like thank for the people who like were reporting bugs uh, to us like, and saying the things they wanted actually from us to like uh, yeah. have new features and uh, they everything together uh, made this website really awesome platform for everyone. Yeah, I would agree because during the beta launch we had, I think uh, during just the beta part before we did the full launch, we had like three or 4,000 beta users, which is a lot of people. Yeah. And then we had a Discord where people would give feedback. Um, and... Like you said, it was a lot of different feedback than I thought it was going to be. One, we just had, there was a lot of bugs. It was a new platform. So we had a lot of bugs we had to fix all the time. Um, and as we fixed them, less came in. So now we almost have no bugs coming in, which is amazing. Um, so it's like a really, most of the bugs or issues are like things with that I did. Like I, I wrote the wrong code here. Or I There's a typo in something I wrote. So almost nothing is about the platform anymore. Um, it's just like things that Alex did wrong. Um, but l like you said, we, ha we got a ton of user feedback of, hey, this is what we want on the platform. And then you guys did just an amazing job of actually building it, uh, kind of like prioritizing it and taking it in and being like, hey, this is the pattern that we're seeing. And then, you know, doing that. Um, I think, you know, one of the one of the most interesting parts of that whole process of the beta launch to the full launch was 
just seeing people actually like excited about it and taking the course uh, or taking the courses and trying out the questions and you know really learning from it. I think that was the coolest part for me. Um, but the second coolest part was people like really being wowed about everything we've built. Because you compare it to other platforms, even you know in the early days when we first launched, you compare it to that and people were like, this is an amazing platform. And that's hard to get, that's hard to do on day one, you know? And so, you know, how would you, how would you say we kind of did that versus other platforms that maybe take two, three years to get to a place where they're like bringing in a lot of users? Yeah, so I think that when we were designing and uh, doing everything with this uh, platform, we actually thought of like, this is how users might use this mm -hmm. website. So we initially built around that and we understood that some things we couldn't get it right. Some people wanted to do things differently. And we took all these feedbacks and analyzed them with Alex, of course. And uh, after that, we decided we need to do certain features right now. So actually, we between these two months, between the beta and the full launch, we introduced a ton of new features. Yeah. Like, a lot. Mm -hmm. And if you, like, uh, if you, like, remember, like, if you're, like, a beta user who was in the early days, and if you, like, check it now, you would see the difference. <laughs> yeah. Even, uh, it's a huge difference. Like, you can see that from your solution videos, maybe, mm -hmm. because what we had earlier versus now. So, I think the the best part was that uh, we could listen to people to address uh, the issues they had and uh, build something they love uh, and something they could, you know, use to learn things uh, in a very efficient manner. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, that is that makes me also so happy. Uh, like I, I have seen people in Discord mentioning about how they use the platform to know, change their career. It makes me so happy. Like we help these people. Yeah. And also the other best part, I guess, people mentioning every day is the mobile capabilities. Mm -hmm. We initially didn't think any of the users would do this in mobile. Yeah. We we thought that no, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> that's not gonna happen at all. But who would actually do this on the mobile? But yeah. When we were seeing the feedbacks, actually we designed this for mobiles mm -hmm. as well from the day one, but we didn't think any of these users would use that. But we see the comments on LinkedIn, Discord, mm -hmm. that people were actually using to practice the questions yeah. uh, on their mobile when they were into grocery or something like that. That makes me so happy that these people are learning when they are, whenever they can yeah. with this platform without having a PC. And, and some uh, some people I saw, they don't own a computer. Mm -hmm. And they still can learn MySQL and uh, Python and other every stuff through the website. Right. And that actually can change their lives. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, that is one of the best part we yeah. did in the platform. Yeah. And, but okay. what, what that makes uh, it kind of outstanding yeah. uh, from other platforms. Yeah. No, I agree. That that was something that I really wanted it to be able to work well on mobile. I didn't know if people would use it. But I remember when I first started out and I was first learning, I was at work and I wanted to learn. But, you know, on the job, you're not supposed to use a company computer. Yeah. <laughs> and so I would only be able to do it at home. But I had time at work. Like I could have, if it, if I had been able to do it on my phone, I would have been able to learn at work while I was not busy, Right. And so a lot of people have messaged me saying, you know, oh, while I'm at my job, I have like two hours during the day that I don't do anything. And so they've been using those two hours on their phone because they can't do it on the company computer, but they can use their phone and practice and learn. And, you know, again, that's just, I wish that was around when I first started. And so being able to see that, uh, you know, years later from when I started, it's just, I don't know, it's really, really exciting um, and very humbling that there's... Now, you know, tens of thousands of analyst builder uh, users out there who are using this platform and learning uh, in just like a really fun, unique, you know, way and a really unique platform. Yeah, it's really unique that I have seen like a lot of people saying that constantly. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, that also like part of the design process. 
uh, when we were like uh, querying the platform there were like certain design decisions we took which led to mobile uh, version of this platform which is you won't see that in other platforms i guess and i'm really happy that people love it and they actually use it mm-hmm. um to you know learn things and you know change their careers because the the other uh, thing which make me so happy is that um i see like lot of people coming to data science are not from you know techy backgrounds they have different careers mm-hmm. they are doing some of uh, our teachers or a lot of different careers and i mean uh, this platform allows them to like learn the skills without how to be like a really tech person so that's also like a really good plus point that you can learn things practice things without you know having like a degree in computer science something like that so mm-hmm. that also makes me very happy like seeing people like that uh doing you know learning things yeah uh in the most easiest way i guess yeah because you don't have to set up mysql or postgres or whatever you can try different run times in the same time uh so i think that also like a you know a big breakthrough there yeah uh, you can do it in mobile It's so good like yeah. uh, i wish i was a data science student <laughs> <laughs> so i can actually use this platform yeah. yeah it really does make it i mean that's the whole purpose of it is to make it pretty easy for people to kind of get into it because i remember trying to set up Microsoft SQL Server when I was first starting out, I ran into so many issues. Um and so just trying to make it easy for people to get in and learn, I like guess that's, that's a really important piece of it. Um so, yeah, that's I mean, I I think that's a good place to stop because there's so much more we could talk about, but we have two other videos uh that we're going to talk about. The next one uh, that we're going to do is the challenges of creating a startup. Um We didn't talk too much about the challenges, mostly about like how it happened. Uh that's what this video is for. But we're going to talk all about kind of the challenges of creating a startup and getting it to where we have it now, which is in a really good place. Um but there were a lot of challenges along the way and so, you know, just talking about I think will be really helpful for people. Um and so yeah, so that's this one. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we go? Uh no. Okay, cool. Anything. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, uh we're going to finish out this video. We're going to start uh we'll we'll uh record this challenges of a startup and then we will see you in that next video.